DPP-4 inhibitors, also known as the glyptins, are a class of drugs that are commonly used to treat diabetes. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover everything you need to know about DPP-4 inhibitors so you'll be ready come test day. We're at a convenience store where I always go to get my daily dose of Dr. Pepper. And because I like Dr. Pepper so much, I always grab the four pack. By the way, the Dr. Pepper four pack is our symbol for the enzyme DPP-4. Since Dr. Pepper is also known as DP, that should help you remember DPP, and the four pack should help you remember the number four. DPP-4 actually stands for dipeptidyl peptidase 4, but this long name isn't very important to remember. What's more important to note is how my access to this Dr. Pepper 4 pack is inhibited. As I reach out to grab it, an alert on the door pops up telling me that the Dr. Pepper is inhibited. Access inhibited. Please seek staff member for assistance. This inhibited Dr. Pepper 4 pack should help you remember we are talking about the DPP-4 inhibitors. You know, drugs that stop or inhibit the proper function of DPP-4. Okay, now that we're anchored to this scene, let's introduce some drug names you should know. To make things easier to remember, we've clustered these drug names and how they are used clinically on the left side of this picture. I didn't notice that the fridge door was locked at first and tried to jiggle this door open. Tried so hard that I accidentally knocked over this dispenser of Glipton tea. You know how these convenience stores always have a dispenser of Glipton brand tea? Because Lipton tea is called Glipton tea in the Pixarize universe. Coincidentally, the Glipton brand name here should help you remember the Glipton endings of all the drug names in the DPP-4 inhibitor class. The ending here is so recognizable that these drugs are commonly just called the Gliptins. We've actually symbolized the most important Glipton drug names to know, so let's review these briefly. First, take a look at the set of Glipton here on display. For the longtime fans of Glipton tea, the company offers a custom collectible tea set, so you can really savor the Glipton experience. Well, this tea set or set of Glipton should help you remember the first drug name you need to know. Citagliptin. Next, notice the line of glyptin by the dispenser. This is one of those long line-shaped boxes of tea for the customers who want to brew their own tea bag in their mugs. Anyway, the line of glyptin should help you remember the next drug name, linagliptin. Afterwards, take a look at the sacks of glyptin under the drink counter. To brew tea for the huge dispenser up top, you gotta use tea from large sacks like these. These sacks of glyptin should help you remember the third drug name, saxagliptin. With all the drug names out of the way, let's move on to discuss what these drugs are used for. Looking at this sugary Dr. Pepper soda has reminded me to check my sugar levels. That's why I took out my diabetes sugar monitor. This sugar monitor should help you remember the treatment of diabetes mellitus, more commonly known as simply diabetes. Since every person with diabetes always gets a monitor to know when they need treatment, right? Recall that diabetes is a disease characterized by high blood sugar levels. DPP-4 inhibitors work to lower blood sugar levels, usually in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Let's talk about what mechanisms these drugs use to do this. As you can tell from their name, these drugs inhibit the enzyme DPP-4. This has several downstream effects, which we'll cover in order. To make this easier to remember, we've clustered these mechanisms in the middle of the scene here. You see, my Dr. Pepper was blocked off because the store seems to be doing maintenance on all the fridges. You can see the maintenance worker finishing his lunch break in the middle of the scene. First, notice how the maintenance worker is buying gulp drinks. If you've ever been to a convenience store like 7-Eleven, I bet you've seen these gulp drinks before. What's more, these aren't ordinary gulp drinks, but ones that won a recent soft drink award, as evidenced by that number one printed on the cup. Putting this together, the gulp 1 should help you remember the hormone GLP-1. Since GLP-1 stands for gulp 1, right? Actually, GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide 1. But this long name isn't very important to remember. What's more important to memorize is how this worker is buying a lot of gulp number 1, since all his co-workers love it too. You might even say that there is an increased amount of gulp number 1 here. This picture should help you remember how the glyptin drugs increase GLP-1. Increasing GLP-1 levels has many effects on the body, including a decrease in blood sugar levels. If you need an additional mnemonic for this mechanism, just inspect the name glyptin itself. The glip part literally stands for GLP, while the N at the end stands for increase. Put this together and you get GLP increase. Now take a look how the worker is trying to pay by emptying coins out of a stomach-shaped fanny pack. The stomach-shaped fanny pack is our recurring symbol for the stomach. 
The medical term for things related to the stomach is gastric, so the emptying of this fanny pack should help you remember emptying of the stomach, a phenomenon also known as gastric emptying. When this guy tried to unzip the bag earlier, he broke the zipper off, so now he's having trouble emptying the bag. Notice how he has to shake it just to get a few coins out. In other words, you might even say that the emptying is decreased or delayed. Putting this all together, this should help you remember a decrease in gastric emptying caused by the DPP-4 inhibitors. Put simply, these drugs work to slow the rate of food moving from your stomach into your intestines. You see, food that we eat is normally emptied from the stomach into the intestines through a process called gastric emptying. Once inside the intestines, the sugars inside food are absorbed into the blood. By decreasing gastric emptying, DPP-4 inhibitors reduce the amount of food that moves at a time into the intestines. This then reduces the amount of sugar absorbed at a time from food into the bloodstream. The end result is a decrease in the spike of blood sugar that occurs after meals. This helps to treat diabetes, since the whole goal was to reduce blood sugar levels. Make sense? I did say this worker just ate lunch, as you can tell by him rubbing his full belly. The worker rubbing his full belly represents increased satiety, another mechanism of the DPP-4 inhibitors, since satiety is just a fancy word for feeling full from eating, right? If you want, you can tie this increased feeling of fullness back to the decreased gastric emptying we just talked about. Less emptying of your stomach means that your stomach will naturally be more full. While some resources treat increased satiety as a side effect, we believe it's easier to think of it as a mechanism behind how this drug is supposed to function. After all, increasing the feeling of fullness works to decrease the amount of food you eat, which decreases blood sugar levels, since less sugar eaten means less sugar in your blood. Alright, one more mechanism to go. The maintenance team was brought in to replace the insulation inside the drink fridges. Since you need insulation to keep the insides of these refrigerators colder than the outside, right? Notice how the maintenance worker is turning on an insulation-releasing machine. Recall that insulation is our recurring symbol for insulin. So this machine releasing insulation is our symbol for insulin release by the pancreas. This worker is activating the machine, representing how DPP-4 inhibitors stimulate insulin release. The action of this released insulin moves glucose from blood into cells, which reduces blood glucose levels to treat diabetes. What's more, this machine is unusual in that it requires the worker to put sugar inside to make the insulation. You know how sugar can be turned into cotton candy, right? Which kind of looks like insulation. Notice specifically how the sugar is falling into the insulation machine. You could even say that this machine depends on sugar to make the insulation. This sugar-dependent insulation release should help you remember glucose-dependent insulin release. When glucose is present, DPP-4 inhibitors stimulate an indirect cascade involving several other hormones that ultimately cause insulin release from the pancreas. And as we just mentioned, this released insulin then works to decrease blood glucose levels. The specifics of exactly how DPP-4 inhibitors cause insulin release are not important. Instead, you just need to know that this indirect cascade maintains your body's natural feedback controls that prevent insulin release from spiraling out of control. You see, when there's not enough glucose present, DPP-4 inhibitors will not cause insulin release, and there will not be a further decrease in blood glucose levels. So, in a way, feedback controls allow DPP-4 inhibitors to shut off their own action to prevent blood glucose levels from falling too low. Make sense? In order to stick the insulation to the walls of each fridge, you need glue, which is why the worker brought this glue gun machine that releases glue guns. However, notice how the tumbling Glipton dispenser has spilled tea all over this glue gun machine, breaking it. By the way, the glue guns here are our recurring symbol for glucagon. Get it? Glue gun for glucagon. So this machine releasing glue guns represents glucagon release in the pancreas. What's more, this release is now broken because of the spilled tea. You bet that that thing is no longer releasing glue guns. This picture should help you remember a decrease in glucagon release, another mechanism of the DPP-4 inhibitors. To review, glucagon is a hormone that normally works to increase blood glucose levels, most notably by breaking down glycogen stores or synthesizing new glucose in the liver. So a decrease in glucagon levels caused by DPP-4 inhibitors works to decrease blood sugar levels. Okay, let's shift gears to talk about the side effects of these drugs. We've clustered all of these towards the right side of the scene near the store's cashier. First, notice how the cashier here has just left the bathroom. You know how these convenience stores always have dirty public bathrooms? 
This one is no exception, as the urinal looks really dirty and infected. This dirty, infected urinal represents urinary tract infections, or UTIs, a common side effect of taking DPP-4 inhibitors. While the mechanism is not well understood, DPP-4 inhibitors are known to cause mild suppression of the immune system, increasing the risk of developing a UTI. So be on the lookout if a patient comes in complaining of pain with urination shortly after starting one of these drugs. It looks like that cashier must have gotten ill after using that infected bathroom. Notice how he looks sick and is blowing his nose. The guy blowing his nose should help you remember upper respiratory infections, another common side effect of DPP-4 inhibitors. As we mentioned before, DPP-4 inhibitors cause mild suppression of the immune system, which increases the risk of developing upper respiratory infections, or URIs. These URIs are usually viral illnesses that affect the upper airways or sinuses, illnesses like the common cold. Next, notice the bag of chips sitting in the bagging area of the checkout. In particular, notice how the manufacturers added a does not cause hypoglycemia tag to the chips to assure consumers of the safety of their product. This tag should help you remember that the DPP-4 inhibitors generally do not cause hypoglycemia as a side effect. To review, hypoglycemia describes when blood sugar levels fall to dangerously low levels. To understand why hypoglycemia does not occur, think back to how DPP-4 inhibitors stimulate an indirect cascade to cause insulin release, which then works to reduce blood glucose levels. This indirect cascade maintains the normal feedback controls that prevent the pathway from spiraling out of control. When there's not enough glucose present, insulin release is shut off, preventing any further lowering of blood glucose levels. This is why these drugs usually do not cause hypoglycemia. Contrast this against directly injected insulin or giving other insulin-releasing drugs like the sulfonylureas, which work by causing the pancreas to directly dump all of its insulin into the bloodstream. Both of those mechanisms have no feedback controls to prevent things from spiraling out of control. Even when there's not enough glucose present, these drugs will continue releasing insulin, causing blood glucose levels to fall dangerously low. This results in hypoglycemia. Just like how this safety tag assures people that the food is safe, DPP-4 inhibitors are safer than many other diabetic drugs since they usually do not cause hypoglycemia. Lastly, notice the weighing scale below the bagging area that measures weight over time, since you need scales like this to detect when items are added to the bagging area, right? No change in weight detected. Please add item to the bagging area. And since the worker wasn't bagging anything while he was in the bathroom, the weight readings here are unchanged over time. This unchanging weight represents how the DPP-4 inhibitors usually have no effect on weight. You see, most other diabetes drugs cause weight gain or weight loss, and as a provider, you should remember which drugs might be better for a given patient's weight profile. DPP-4 inhibitors are fairly unusual in that they generally cause no changes in weight. And that's a wrap for this video on the DPP-4 inhibitors. Let's review what we've learned. The DPP-4 inhibitors are a class of drugs recognizable by their glyptin ending, including citagliptin, linagliptin, and saxagliptin. These drugs are used to treat type 2 diabetes mellitus by lowering blood sugar levels. Inhibition of the DPP-4 in enzyme has several downstream effects, including increasing GLP-1 levels, decreasing gastric emptying, and increasing satiety. These drugs also stimulate glucose-dependent insulin release and decrease glucagon release. Side effects of these drugs include an increased risk of developing urinary infections and upper respiratory infections. Notably, these drugs typically do not cause hypoglycemia and usually have no effect on weight in patients. And with that, we're finally done with the DPP-4 inhibitors. Let's grab that fresh pack of Dr. Pepper and get out of here. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.